Miss Cheyenne gonna get home. I'm dying to know how she did on the test. I need to wash these windows. <laughs> Mom, don't get your hopes up. Cheyenne's taking a college exam, not just guessing which hand the candy is in. <laughs> Besides, what's the big deal if she fails? Maybe she's not cut out to be a dentist. I'll tell you what the big deal is. No matter how old you kids are, I still want to protect you. Shoot, if I thought you could still breathe, I'd bubble wrap you. Hey, have you heard from Cheyenne? <sighs> Do I look like I've heard from Cheyenne? If I had, I'd go, oh, or not, ooh. <laughs> I have been sending Cheyenne good thoughts all day. Oh, good. For her and Sting. <laughs> I love Sting. <laughs> Hey, Barbara Jean, guess which hand? Oh, I'm not going to fall for that. You never have any candy. <laughs> Left. <laughs> Where is she? This can't be good. Reba, relax. I'm sure she did just fine. And so what if she didn't? Heck, I flunked my first three pre-med exams and barely squeaked by on my fourth. You must be so proud. <laughs> now, Brock Cheyenne's taking a big risk here. She's dream of being a dentist. I remember how crushed I was when I wasn't perky enough for The Price is Right. <laughs> Someday, Bob Barker. <laughs> this is so nerve-wracking. I mean, I let my little birdie leave the nest, and now she's out there flying around on a world full of plate glass windows. And here she comes. <laughs> hey, little birdie, how'd it go? Oh, oh honey. Oh. Oh, you know what? I squeaked by on my fourth try, and I'm sure you will, too. Gotcha! What? I got a B plus! A B plus! That is a B, with a plus after it, <laughs> almost an A. Oh! For real? For real! All right! All right. Oh, I'm not... Yeah. yeah. taken a test where I knew so many of the answers. I've got to think it was a study. We have to celebrate. I am taking everybody out to dinner. I'm even springing for lobster. <gasps> but only for Cheyenne. <laughs> Honey, I am so proud of you. You picked a really tough career, and so far you're doing great. Thank you, but you deserve a lot of the credit, Mom. Even though I said at first you shouldn't do it? Yeah, because it was like once you did believe in me, I knew I could do it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I believed in you right from the beginning. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're not talking about you. <laughs> I believed in you. I believe you can do anything you set your mind to. You and Sting. <laughs> you know, I have to say, it seems like you two are really growing up and making some solid decisions. <laughs> Guess what, everybody? I'm quitting school. <laughs> I want you to divorce him. <laughs> hey! My roots are planted in the past Though my life is changing fast Who I am is who I want to be A single mom who works too hard Who loves her kids and never stops With gentle hands and the heart of a fighter school? Yep. Go get me a switch. <laughs> Mrs. H, I'm not quitting just to do nothing. I gotta try out with the arena football. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna be a dentist uh -huh. and you're gonna be a pro football player? We're gonna be a power couple, uh -huh. honey. <laughs> Man, that is so awesome. Excuse me, honey. <laughs> this could be your stepping stone to the NFL and I want you to remember, I've always believed in you and your ability to get me seats on the 50-yard line. <laughs> Playing college football. Yeah, I know, I know, but the scout says I'm practically a lock. And get this, I could make 60 G's a year. $60,000? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be rich. Hey, 50 yard line seats and, and a parking pass. <laughs> 60,000 bones a year to do what you love? Okay, this just in. Vans made it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't think it's a good idea. Oh. oh. Man. <laughs> so, are you saying I shouldn't do it? 
No, I, I just think it's a bad idea, but you do what you think's best. So who wants pie? <laughs> Man, that is not fair. She can't say it's a bad idea and then offer me pie. <laughs> I love pie! <laughs> hey, honey, I made some coffee. You want some? I don't know. If it's free, I'll take some. It's about all we can afford. Now that we're not rich. <laughs> I told Van it was his decision. That's a big step for me. Mom, he's not going to try out because he knows you think it's a bad idea. Well, that's another thing you can thank me for one day. And what a busy day that's going to be. Okay, I'm off to school. Another day, another zero dollars. I hate to sound preachy, but stay in school. Don't do drugs. Well, all I'm saying is colleges are full of people who thought college was going to get them somewhere. And where are they? In college. Think about it. Mom, this isn't like all of our other decisions. Van really thought this one out. Oh, I'm sure he's got 60,000 reasons. He just cares about the blink blink. It's bling bling, Mom. <laughs> blink blink is what I do when Dad tells another one of his golf stories. <laughs> Whatever. I just don't think Van realizes what he's given up. Honestly, Mom, Van's not that into school. You know, he's only there to play football. Okay, what if he gets hurt? He's not going to have an education to fall back on. Mom, even if Van plays for just one year, it would give us enough money that he could go back to school anytime he wanted to. And it would pay for my dental school, and we could start a college fund for Elizabeth. Okay, I'm going to need a little time to find the flaws in this argument, so <laughs> until then, let's just slide them aside and pretend they don't count. Anything else? Mom, I think Van and I are finally putting things together. You know, and if you look past the whole teen pregnancy thing, we've made a lot of really good choices. Okay, fine. But if I find out that Kira taught you how to argue with me, you're all in trouble. <laughs> Van, would you come in here, please? Did you call me? Because I was thinking about getting a haircut. You might want to kill that dream. <laughs> Listen, I realize that I might have been a little quick to judge. So if you really want to try out for the arena football, you have my blessings. What's your game, lady? <laughs> no game. Cheyenne just convinced me that there's another way of looking at this. And maybe I was looking at it in a negative way. But it's just that I was trying to protect you guys. So you still think it's a bad idea? Who knows? Maybe it's a great start for you in a great career. I mean, it could go from arena football to the NFL. And you could take the Cowboys to the Super Bowl. I mean, this tryout could set you up for the rest of your life. You really think I could do it? I really do. Well, thanks, Mrs. H. You have no idea what this means to me. I'm going to go get started on the rest of my life. <laughs> okay, Mom, I'm heading home. And I'll be at Tommy's. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you finish your homework? Nope, and I'm never doing homework again. Kira said I can drop out of school like Van. Kira? Well, he's going to eventually. I mean, you've talked to the boy. Don't you think he's peaked? Jake, go upstairs. Kira will help you with your homework. Oh, oh man. man. Well, we'll start with subtraction. What is my life minus two hours? You know, I taught her how to read, too. You know what I taught you? Shut up, Kira. <laughs> Have you heard from Van? No, but I know he's going to make the team. Last night, we had one of our good luck fights. For a couple of minutes, I couldn't even stand him. <laughs> You're an odd young couple. <sighs> Mom, he has got to make the team. I've already imagined how awesome our lives will be. I can't go back to how it was before. You mean this morning? Yeah. Hey, has, uh... He's not back yet. Oh, good. We wanted to be here for the good news. Now remember, everybody, this is a big moment in Van's life. Of course, that doesn't mean we can't horn in on it. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, hi, honey, how did it go? Well, I can tell you how it went, or you can read about it in Van Stinks magazine. <laughs> well, 
At least you got your own magazine. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're doing the same thing that Cheyenne did to us. Come on. Come on. Say it. Gotcha. Oh. I made it. Come on. You dog. Yeah. Go on and yell at Van. Yell. Gotcha. <laughs> Honey. Van. Gotcha. I'm, I'm going to be upstairs taking a long look in the mirror at myself. <laughs> won't quit. I know he's messing with us. <laughs> no, he's not. Who wants pie? Hey, honey. How's Van? Any better? No. He just keeps staring in the mirror at himself. You know, I don't get it. Trust me, Van is good enough to make that team. He's fantastic under pressure. Did he say what happened? He just said he keeps on thinking about what Mom said, you know, how this was his big chance. <laughs> oh, Reba. You sent Van off thinking? <laughs> thinking is highly overrated. <laughs> yeah, well, now it all makes sense. No, an athlete can't be thinking. He's got to go on instinct. It's like golf, you know... The other day I was on this par five, okay? Second shot, 240 yards over water to the green. And I kept thinking that my five wood wasn't gonna be enough. And sure enough, I hit it right in the water. Double bogey. What's your point, Brock? No point, Reba. Can I just get a bad day off my chest? Awful. I didn't mean to put pressure on Van. I was trying to be supportive. I mean, it worked when I did it with Cheyenne's test. You know what? Now that I think about it, I did feel a little more nervous. Who knows? You might have cost me an A. <laughs> Why don't we just give Van another tryout? We can tell the coach he just cracked under pressure. Sure. Coaches love that in a player right after her slow and throws like a girl. Is there any reason someone could get another tryout? I don't know, maybe. I guess if they were sick or something. Then he's sick. Ooh, broken leg. <laughs> Why the coach saw him? If he'd broken his leg, he'd be wearing a cast. Right. No cast. Oh, I got it. Nope. Then he'd be in a wheelchair. I'll think of something on my way over there. Hey, but why are you going? Shouldn't Van go? Van go. Van go! Tell the coach he cut his ear off. Come in. Hi there, I'm Reba Hart. Well, if you're here for the cheerleader tryouts, you're hired. <laughs> I've never been a cheerleader <laughs> Anyway, I'm looking for the coach who held the football tryouts this afternoon That would be me Oh Coach Class Nice to meet you So I want to talk to you about my son-in-law who tried out today but didn't make it Oh, please, don't be one of those One of those what? One of those mothers or fathers or whoever Who call me when somebody doesn't make the team Nobody believes their all-star just isn't good enough. Oh, that must be terrible. Mm -hmm. But in my case, it's true. <laughs> Why is that? Because your family's perfect and nobody could possibly fail? Bobby was nervous. Bobby was sick. Well, you know what? Sometimes Bobby just stinks. <laughs> well, he doesn't stink. He probably plays better than anybody else on your stinking team. Sure he does. What would a football coach know about a good player? You know what they say. If you want to know if a guy can play, ask his mother-in-law. You know what? I'm glad Van didn't make the team, because that would mean I'd have to see an arrogant, judgmental coach low class like you again. Van? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You're Van Montgomery's mother-in-law? Yeah. He didn't show up for his tryout. He, he what? I figured he was sick or something. Until you came down here and started screaming at me. Gotcha! 
Oh, you thought I was all rude and crazy for real? Nah. <laughs> I was just kidding around. Uh, no, no. I, I just came down here to reschedule the tryout because of, uh, of what you said, that he was sick and all. What happened to him? Oh, uh, well, uh, the doctor um, thought he might have had a broken leg or, or cut off his ear, but he's played through worse. <laughs> Look, I'd be happy to give him another try. We've heard good things about him. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Hey. Are you sure you're not a cheerleader? <laughs> Would you stop? <laughs> What is it, hon? Because for the tenth time, if something's bothering you, I'd be glad to talk. No, no. I'm okay. I think I'm getting over it. All right. Oh. <laughs> Van, Cheyenne. Hey, Mrs. H. Where were you? Oh, I was down visiting with Coach Class. I gotta go. <laughs> Get back here. What's going on? Van didn't go to the tryout. Van, is that true? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe? Yeah. You mean you, you lied to us and you made us feel terrible for you and you didn't even go? I know, I know. If I were a guy like me, I'd hate myself. And I am. So I do. <laughs> so why didn't you go to the tryout? Trust me, that coach has great taste. <laughs> I couldn't take the pressure. If you didn't make it? Well, if I did, you said this would set us up for life. Life. And I was being encouraging. You were being terrifying. <laughs> Suddenly it hit me. If I made the team, I'd have a career. Do you know what that would make me? An adult. <laughs> ben, were you in the room for the part where your wife had a baby? <laughs> Listen, I, I know we're parents, but still, we didn't have to grow up so fast. You were always more parenty. Parentish? Parentilius. <laughs> if I have a career, then we have to go out on our own. And, and, and if I blow it, then my entire family suffers. This is age. I don't think I'm ready to be the man of the house. I like it when you're the man of the house. So you want me to cook and clean and take care of you for the rest of your life? And I'd be very grateful. <laughs> You're using me as your crutch. Now, this has got to stop. Well, what do you mean? You can't take away a man's crutch. <laughs> you have to make your own decisions without my opinion. And if you fail, you fail. You deal with it. Now, I got you another tryout. And whether you use it or not, that's up to you. Wait, wait, wait. You asked the coach to give me another... Oh, man, now he's going to think I'm some mama's boy in law. <laughs> No comment. Fly away, little birdies. Good luck, world. <sighs> so I guess you're mad at me, too. What, that you're... You're scared of growing up? Uh, I know the feeling. Van, you're not alone out there, okay? Whatever happens, happens to us. You know, we're a team. And I got news for you. You do not have to be the man of the house. We both will be. We succeed together and we fail together. You mean it? Yeah. So do we think I should try out for the team? Yeah, we do. Okay. Mm. And hey, if I don't make the team, it doesn't matter because you're still going to become a dentist. <laughs> oh, what? Trying to put all the pressure on me? Oh. <laughs> Just make the team. Okay. <laughs> And just think of it this way. If everything else goes wrong, we can always live with Mom for the rest of our lives. <sighs> Cheyenne, if you're nervous about Van's tryout, I'd be more than happy to talk. No, no, it's okay, I'm fine. Not really nervous, nervous anyway, you know? I'm just more like, hmm, I wonder if he made it nervous. <laughs> oh. Hey. 
Well? Yeah, well. I made it! <laughs> You got a minute? Oh, honey, not this morning. I am running so late for work. Well, I kind of wanted your advice about boys. I'll call in sick. <laughs> Boy advice? I'm your older sister. That's my birthright. No offense, but I kind of decided not to ask you for advice when your water broke during high school graduation. <laughs> You're seriously asking mom for advice about boys? Barbara Jean would be better than mom. I would be better than Barbara Jean. It goes me, Barbara Jean, dad, Van, Jake... Then, Mom. <laughs> I'm glad we don't have a dog. <laughs> Barbara Jean is nuts, and Dad, well, as he puts it, he was a teenage boy once, too. And apparently a creepy one. <laughs> and I can't talk to my friends because then everybody in school would know which guy I like. Wait a minute. Are you saying there was nobody left, so you came to me? Fine, I'll take it. <laughs> Well, you know that a bunch of kids from band have been hanging out after practice, right? I do now. Anyways, there's this guy, Scott, who plays trombone, and he's funny, and he has blue eyes, and he's really cute. And does he have an older brother? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Some people listen, and some people make jokes. Anyways, I like him, and I think he likes me, too. But when I drop hints about going to the movies or something, he just cleans his spit valve. How can I tell if he likes me, too? I can think of, like, ten ways. How many can you come up with, Mom? I have one. You can ask him out to the movies. Ask him out? That is the worst advice I've ever heard. A girl can't wait around forever for a guy to clean his spit valve. <laughs> if you want to know if he likes you, just ask him out. What if he says no? Well, then say thank you very much and move on to the woodwinds. <laughs> Well, I guess it's better than not knowing. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> Karen and I talked about dating. I'm going to put that in her baby book. <laughs> Mom, work? Right, I'll do that later. <laughs> Brock. Did you tell Kira to ask a boy out on a date? I know. Can you believe Kira asked Mom for advice about boys? That's right. When it comes to giving Kira advice about boys, it goes me, Jake, Van, and then Cheyenne. <laughs> what about me? Don't I make the list? Oh, you're at the top of another list. <laughs> Well, the boy said yes, so thanks to you, she has a date on Friday. Yes! Kira took my advice and it worked! That goes in the book. <laughs> Kira has a date because of mom? Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. What's next? Jake's going to give good fashion advice? Well, he did pick out my shirt today. <laughs> I need to lie down. <laughs> well, since you two are already upset, Jake called from Vegas. He married a showgirl. <laughs> Are you finished teasing? Yes. Wait. Yes. <laughs> this is a real problem, Reba. Kira's not allowed to date until she's 18. 18? She's not allowed to date through high school? It's a good rule. And it worked wonderfully until you undermined us. Hey, don't blame me. Kira didn't tell me about it. Well, she's not entirely at fault. We haven't told her yet. <laughs> oh. So you guys have a bunch of secret rules. Did you write them down in invisible ink? She's 14. It hadn't come up yet. And I was ready to ban dating altogether after what happened to Cheyenne. Something happened to Cheyenne? <laughs> hey. I think your 
Kira's mature enough to handle herself. It doesn't matter how mature Kira is. It's the guy that's the problem. Oh, the guy. I'm the problem. <laughs> well, why don't you and the rest of the villagers grab your torches and run me out of town? <laughs> I'm not talking about you, Van. I'm talking about teenage boys who have only one thing on their mind. Well, I got news for you, Mr. H. I'm a teenage boy, and you know what I got on my mind? Nothing. Well, I think you guys are overreacting. There are two 14-year-olds going to a movie. We'll meet the boy here. I'll drop him off and pick him up. It'll be fine. It's not fine. You should have checked with us before you told Kira she could go out. I should have checked with you. I really believe that as parents, we three should present a united front. Yeah. Well, that's a good idea, Barb Jean, except you're not Kira's parent. <gasps> Me! <laughs> well, for the past three months, I've been parent enough to make her dinner and do her laundry. Wow, three whole months. That is hard. <laughs> I mean, I just gave birth to her. You made her a sandwich. <laughs> Raising Kira is my job. <clears throat> yeah, and his too. So, like always, Reba's right and yeah. we're wrong. Mm -hmm. Good. Remember that and we won't have these arguments. <laughs> I hope you know what you're doing, Reba. Come on, Barbara G. Fine. And maybe next time I'll marry somebody whose ex-wife appreciates me. <laughs> Violent. Those pro guys are tough and mean, and they do not like pretty boys. No, it's probably just because you're new. No, no, no. I'm the best looking guy on the team. Hey, Jake, how is school? That depends. Is mom home? No. <sighs> then school is great. Would you sign her name on this? You throw a pencil at a girl in school? Why do boys act like that? Whoa, whoa. Why do boys act like that? Is that what you think? Is that what you want our daughter to think? That boys are automatically the bad guy? He's not automatically the bad guy, Van. It's just... I mean, come on. They just are. <laughs> I bet Jake had a good reason. Tell her, Jake. I was mad. That's not good enough. Dig deeper. <laughs> Jill Campbell was writing notes about how she loves me and passing them to her friends. She wouldn't stop. There you go. <laughs> the girl started it. I bet she didn't even get into trouble, did she? Girls don't get in trouble, Van. Girls don't get in trouble, Cheyenne. <laughs> it's always the guy. Jake here is a victim. A victim of Jill Campbell's love and of a sexist society. I got you, buddy. I got you. <laughs> Well, I never thought of it like that. Well, me neither, but now that I have, I'm going to do something about it. Like what? You're going to write a musical about men's issues? <laughs> uh, no. Okay. I'm going to go talk to Jake's teacher. I make up one song in the shower and you won't let me live it down. <laughs> Mind if I get dressed for my date over here? Things are a little tense at the convent. <laughs> I was hoping he would. Hey, I've been working on this all day, and I've come up with five sure-fired, interesting topics for you guys to talk about. I'll just wait outside. No! <laughs> Come here. Going upstairs. I'll try not to embarrass you. Is he here yet? No. Good, because I don't like him. <laughs> But I'm going to like him even less when he gets here, so I need to know how to pace myself. Relax. This is Kira's first day. We should be excited for her. Well, I'm excited. Of course, that's because I'm not Kira's parent, so I don't care what happens to her. <laughs> I think good times roll, I say. I don't even know why we're meeting this kid. I know exactly what he's going to say. Hello, sir. Nice to meet you, sir. Any 14-year-old punk that calls me sir is up to no good. Believe me, I know what sir means. It's a word kids use to trick old people. 
Brock, I'm sure when you meet the boy, you'll find that he's just a sweet, scared little kid. Not all creepy like you were. <laughs> Kara, your date's here. <laughs> How do I look? Just oh. Hey, I'm Scott. Is, is it cool that I parked my car on the driveway? You're Scott? With a car that you drive? 14-year-olds don't drive. I know, I'm, I'm 17. I, 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 and there's no need to worry. I've had my license for over a year, and I've never gotten a ticket. Your daughter is safe with me, sir. Oops. Hey, Scott. Looks like you met my parents. So, are you ready to go? No! And, uh, no need to rush off. I mean... The night is young. Not as young as you thought. <laughs> Why don't you two have a seat? Your father and I will get you a snack in the kitchen. Okay. <laughs> Scott. Right here. <laughs> Hi. I'm not Kira's parent. <laughs> you kids want a beer? Barbara Jean. I'm coming. <laughs> Jake, Jake, go in the living room and embarrass your sister. Five bucks if you can chase the grown man away. Seventeen. He's seventeen years old. Oh, man. At seventeen, I was really bad. <laughs> You're threatening me. That just means you're doing your job. Now get back in there. <laughs> what are we going to do? I don't want Kira dating a 17-year-old boy, but if we forbid her from dating, she's just going to sneak around. Well, this is what happens when we do things your way. I don't think this is a good time for finger-pointing, Brock. Not when Tom Jones is sitting in our living room. <laughs> well, if you asked me... Well, I did All right! <laughs> you guys can stop pretending to get snacks. Scott and I will grab something once we're in Mexico. Oh, very funny, Kira. Why didn't you tell us how old he is? I'm 14, he's 17. What's the big deal? Dad's 45 and you're 42. You're 45? <laughs> the date is off. But Mom said I could go. Yeah, well, now I'm saying you can't. Kira, we can't allow you to go out with a 17-year-old all by yourself. You and Scott can still see each other in groups. Oh, well, this is great. All my friends are busy, and he's already here. Where am I going to find a group? <laughs> I'd like to see this movie. It's full of TV actors. <laughs> this is the movie they wanted to see. They're the ones on the date. Well, we could have voted. There's more of us. Shh. I can't see where they are. How'd you lose them already? We didn't lose them. Besides, we're not like we're going to sit right beside them. I know. In between. <laughs> no, they deserve some privacy. Where in the heck are they? <gasps> there they are in the front row. Come on, we can sit right here and keep an eye on them. Excuse me. <clears throat> I hate this. Whose bright idea was it to have daughters? Probably Rebus. She calls all the shots. I have to do no talking in movie theaters. From now on, whenever you're around me, pretend we're in a movie theater. <laughs> Did you see that? He's doing the stretch and reach. He's going to put his arm around her. It's just an arm. Just an arm? Do you even know how babies are born? <laughs> Would you please just stay out of this? Head on shoulder? We have a head on shoulder situation. Oh, that was fast. See what happens when you ignore the arm? Nothing happens. Scott seems like a nice enough kid. I mean, he didn't have any problem with us tagging along. Besides, they both know we're here, and I don't think they're going to be... Oh, Lord, did he just swallow her face? <laughs> My daughter's getting kissed right in front of me. Does anyone else smell burnt toast? I think I'm having a stroke. <laughs> Care whose daughter she is. Date over. Barbara Jean, would you stop parenting my child? If anyone says no kissing, it's gonna be me. 
I see no kissing. <laughs> You're not Kira. <laughs> oh my God. Non-sexist seeker of justice. How did it go with Jake's teacher? What? Oh, good. Good? Like she agreed the girl was just as much to blame as Jake was? Yeah, pretty much. Oh. She moved her desk to the other side of the room and told her to stay away from Jake at recess. I liked her, okay? You blew it! Well, I'm sorry! <laughs> Jenny, I'm sorry. But you stuck up for what you believed in and you were right. Yeah, kind of. What does that mean? Maybe Jake wasn't the bad guy, but I think I was the bad guy with you. I mean, your dad was right. I did have that thing on my mind. I mean, you were so innocent and unsuspecting. A little papaya ready to be plucked. <laughs> so I plucked. <laughs> and now when they talk about the thing that happened to Cheyenne, I'm the thing. Van, you are not the thing. Yeah. And to be honest, I wasn't that innocent. Could you elaborate on that, please? I did tons of stuff to make you notice me. Like walking past your locker in my drill team uniform. Yeah. Or pretending that I needed a ride home from school because my mom forgot to pick me up. I mean, come on, Van, what kind of mom forgets to pick her daughter up every day for a month? <laughs> I just assumed she drank. <laughs> so girls really do that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Is that why Tammy Terenzi did the same thing? No, she's just a slut. <laughs> Thanks for not running away in fear after meeting my psycho parents. It's, it's fine, don't worry about it. What do you mean mine? My dad makes his own pickles. <laughs> Five minutes means five minutes. You get four more minutes. So, um, did you get to school? Yeah. Yeah. on a date, why didn't you just say so? I did want you to go. I just didn't want that other couple to have any fun. <laughs> well, I was against it. But once again, we did it your mom's way. Well, my way didn't include Barbara Jean putting her two cents in all night long. Well, if you had listened to my two cents, Kira wouldn't have gone on a date. Kira going on a date wasn't the problem. You're the problem. Oh, you know what? I Will don't you know stop? This is the problem. The three of you fighting over everything I do. I can live with rules, but you three have to agree on what they are. Otherwise, I'm the one who suffers. You ruined my first date. Ruined or made memorable? <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. Wasn't fair to you. From now on, your father and I will discuss all the rules so there'll be no confusion. And Barbara Jean. You don't want this to work, do you? You're doing it again. Okay, fine. Barbara Jean can participate. But you two only get one vote. Why do we only get one? One brain, one vote. That's the law. <laughs> okay. So I guess the three of us are going to have to figure out some system for making rules. Well, I think since she lives with us, Brock and I should make the rules and then run them by you. Or... I can put the rules in a car and run them over you. Uh. <laughs> well, I think the best system would be if I didn't have any rules and I could prove how responsible I am. All in favor? 
Sorry, I was pulling for you. <laughs> okay, I have a few rules that I would like to discuss. Barbara Jean, you can vote on the rules. You can't make them. Well, that's not fair. I don't right, care what fair. Look, You're right. You I should have come to you. in our house. I was not. Jake! Good news, buddy. I fixed everything with Jill Campbell. I told her the only reason you threw a pencil at her was because you liked her. And guess what? She's waiting for you outside on the porch. <laughs> Talk to Jill Campbell? Now, don't expect this every time, okay? The next babe, you get on your own. Right? I don't like Jill Campbell anymore. I already threw something at Linda Osborne. Jake, you have a date. No, Van. You have a date. I was wrong. Jake doesn't live here anymore. Oh, you look nice. Yeah. I'm going to go get Van. I've never picked up a guy at the airport before. It's going to be so romantic. Yeah, it's like Paris with nachos. I am taking Van to dinner to celebrate his first away game. Oh. You know, this is the first time he's ever come back from being away. Hey, Cheyenne, can I go with you to pick up Van? Oh, Jakey, I don't think you'd want to. Why not? Well, when Van gets off the plane... He's going to see me, and I'm going to be standing there looking awesome, and he's going to drop his bags, and I'm going to leap into his arms, and we're going to hug, and we're going to kiss. And... All right! <laughs> Gross, you ruined it! You really did. Hey, hey, I'm home! Oh, I was going to come get you! Well, I got an earlier flight, and I wanted to surprise you. Surprise! <laughs> you... Well, next time you surprise me, tell me, okay? <laughs> At least we can still go to dinner. Oh, shoot. I already got something on the way home with my buddy who drove me. Well, that's great, Van. You ruined every romantic plan I had. Well, Mrs. Montgomery, uh -huh. I have some plans of my oh, own. Really? Oh, go, oh, go, 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 go. <laughs> go out to dinner before you make me lose my appetite. But I really am full, and I'm not just saying that like I do when you make dinner. Well... You can just sit there and watch me eat and talk to me. You better be entertaining. Have fun. Hello. Hi. Is Van here? Oh, he just left. I'm sorry. Oh, well, he left this in my car. Could you give it to him, please? Thank you. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait just a second. Uh, are you the buddy that Van had dinner with? Yeah. And you brought him home? Yeah. I work for the team. I'm Kate. And you are? Worried. <laughs> hey! My lips are planted in the past Though my life is changing fast Who I am is who I want to be A single mom who works too hard Who loves her kids and never stops With gentle hands and the heart of a fighter I'm a survivor Tell me a little bit more about Van's jacket. He left it in my car. Oh, so you and I have a lot in common because he left his daughter in my house. <laughs> She's upstairs. She's a baby. Hey, Mom. Hey. Hi, I'm Kira. I'm Kate. I'm a friend of Van's. A friend of Van's? <laughs> what, Van can't have friends? What's so weird and suspicious about that? <laughs> We met on the team. I'm in publicity, and we had dinner because we're thinking about doing a profile of Van. Oh, so you had dinner with Van and Cheyenne. I only asked because, as a couple, they fascinate me. <laughs> nope. Just Van. Just Van. That naughty boy. <laughs> well, I better get going. Thanks for the tea. Very, very good. All right. 
Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I gotta go. Kira. Fan had a business dinner with a business associate. Yeah, a hot one. Man, as soon as I move out, you people decide to get interesting. Maybe I could take the door off and it would save you some time. <laughs> Do you need something? Where's Van? Out to center. Kira said Van went out with some really cute girl who returned some of his clothing. You never returned the clothing. I mean, what did Cheyenne say? Well, she doesn't know. Well, he lied to my daughter. Well, he didn't exactly lie. He said he had dinner with a buddy. Yeah, we heard a hot one. I missed you more. No, I missed you more. I will be upstairs <laughs> brushing my teeth. <laughs> So you guys had a good time, huh? Yeah, it was great. Except I bashed my face in the salad bar sneeze guard. <laughs> my own fault. I sneezed. Oh, it must be nice to enjoy a meal with your wife after being on the road. <laughs> ah, the road. <laughs> Lonely, open road. <laughs> Yeah, it must get awfully boring eating with your buddies all the time, huh? Does it? Well, then let's talk about the weather. Is it chilly outside? Yeah. Chilly enough, you might need your jacket. Oh, hey, my jacket. I thought I left it in. in. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's all you can say? Oh. Here's one for you. Aha! <laughs> I told Cheyenne I left it on the plane. She's right upstairs. Would you please be quiet? Buddy, if I were you, I'd be more worried about where Cheyenne's father is. <laughs> Me! I'm right here! Okay, Van, what's going on? So I got a ride home with this girl, Kate. What is the big deal? Well, the big deal is you made Kate sound like a Brian or a Tommy or, or a Fred or a Pierre or, a, or Alejandro. I think you owe us an explanation, bud. Kate, we were talking business, okay? This profile could really help my career. And that's it? That's it. I mean, come on, guys, you know me. Do you really think I'll do something like that? No. Sorry, Van. Okay, if it's all so innocent, why didn't you just tell Cheyenne that Kate brought you home? <laughs> because Cheyenne is really, really jealous of other women. In high school, I did this report on Margaret Thatcher, and she was like, why don't you have a baby with her? <laughs> well, she's way more mature now, and I think you should have told Cheyenne. Was that how you all feel? Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> Well, all right, then. The nose have it. Thanks, Mr. H. How can you agree with him, Brock? He lied to Cheyenne. Yeah, to save himself a huge hassle. Oh, so you're okay with someone lying to their wife? Yeah. Are you comfy with that, Brock? <laughs> Look, I've never been comfortable with lying, but... But sometimes women overreact, and telling them stuff only makes it worse. Except for you, honey. <laughs> Lying in a marriage always leads to trouble. She never has to find out. <laughs> but because we know about it, we're involved. And there's no way I can look my daughter in the eye and lie to her. Just put it out of your mind. Oh, is that what you do, Brock? No, uh, no, no. <laughs> You're both overreacting. It's over. It was a jacket in a car. I don't see how it's ever going to come up. It's a lie. It'll find a way. Yeah, well, it's still their life, so butt out. But out. But out. Fine. <laughs> China. <laughs> So 
So Van was just having a business dinner and didn't want to upset Cheyenne. That's all that happened. How did something so interesting suddenly become so boring? <laughs> hey, look, Van thought he lost his jacket. Interesting again. <laughs> Who found it? Van's what? Huh? <laughs> Van's jacket. What? <laughs> Mom? Hey! That's Van's jacket! <laughs> it came overnight express from the airline. They found it on the plane and sent it over. I signed for it and tipped the guy five bucks. So, whenever you can get that back to me, Cheyenne. <laughs> oh, sure, thanks. I'll go get my purse. Wait a second. That's a lie. And you came up with that way too quick, little missy. <laughs> okay, what is going on? <laughs> oh, this is silly. <laughs> and, uh, you're gonna laugh your butt off. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, this didn't come overnight express. Oh. Yeah, uh, Van's buddy who dropped him off mm -hmm. uh, dropped this by because um, Van left it in her car. Coffee? Her car? As in she? As in a woman? Wait. I never thought about it that way, but... Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This woman... Was she young and pretty? Or was she old and ugly? Hey, some older women can be pretty too, you know. <laughs> Just answer me, Mom. Well, she was pretty young. I mean, uh, not pretty young. I mean, she was young and pretty. <laughs> well, what, what did she say? How does he know her? Well, she works for the team, but it's strictly professional. Oh, my gosh. Does she sleep in the same hotel as him? Nothing good happens in hotels, Mom. Oh, Cheyenne. I, I think we're missing the point here. What? The good news what? is Van got his jacket back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that is good news. <laughs> kind of gives it that rugged outdoorsy look, don't you think? Hey, Mrs. H. Where's Cheyenne? I got her some flowers. Oh, that's a good idea. You might want to throw in a diamond ring, a convertible, and a beach house. <laughs> well, I kind of blew all my cash on the flowers. So. Oh, wait. What for? I don't know. Uh, Mrs. H. My flight leaves tonight, and uh, don't make me say I want to spend some alone time with your daughter. <laughs> We know that both makes us feel a little uncomfortable. Yes, it does. Look, Ben. Cheyenne knows that Kate brought you home. What? I can't believe you told her, Big Mouth. <laughs> Ma'am? I had to tell her. I can't lie to her. Well, what did she say? Oh, nothing much. <laughs> well, I don't hear slamming. Are my clothes all over the front lawn? Maybe she's taking it okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. I want your cheating clothes out of this house. What? Why? Because they're your work clothes. You wear them when you play on your team, the Gigolos. Oh. Oh, uh, all right, listen up. Hold on. Neutral corners. Let's talk about this. Oh, if he wants to talk about it, why doesn't he just talk to... What's her name? Kate. This is H. Kate. Why don't you just talk to your buddy Kate over dinner with your jacket off? Okay, all right, all right. Look, look, Cheyenne. I'm sure Van is sorry that he lied. No, I'm not. Okay, well, talking didn't work. Let's try some quiet time. Come on. You know what? I, I was trying to save myself from this. And if I did anything wrong, you made me do it. Oh, so it's my fault? Well, I know it's not mine. I didn't do anything. And why am I supposed to believe that? Why aren't you, huh? I mean... I don't want to be with anybody else. And I'm sick and tired of feeling like I have to lie all the time. You know what? I'm glad your mom ratted me out like a mob stoolie. <laughs> I'm relieved. Well, so am I. Because I finally know that my husband's a big, fat, lying fibber. I can't talk to you anymore. I can't talk to you anymore, so why don't you just get out? Fine, I'm gone. Fuck! But only because I enjoy taking long walks. Well, enjoy! Well, I will! <laughs> Seriously, I gotta move back here. <laughs> I 
still think she should give me the benefit of the doubt. I mean, isn't it innocent until proven guilty? What she's doing is un-American. Man, it's just because she loves you so much. You know, when Reba and I were first dating, she was incredibly jealous. Once, I didn't call her for a whole week. Okay, she never said anything about it, but you could tell it really bugged her. Well, she never said anything. No, no, you could tell. <laughs> Man, are you sure you don't want to go and apologize? I mean, it's only a couple of hours till your plane goes, and you're going to be gone for three whole days. No way, Mr. H. I mean, I need to make a stand now or else I'm going to be backing down my entire marriage. I mean, you told me that's how you handled both of your difficult wives. <laughs> that's guy talk, man. You don't do guy talk in a guy's living room. Well, there's the liar. <laughs> and the man comfortable with the liar. Okay, that stopped being funny half an hour ago. So what's for dinner, sweetie? Oh, your favorite. New York steak with baked potatoes and homemade apple pie for dessert. Oh, man, that sounds great. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> We're having franks and beans. Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't want to tell you the truth because you might overreact and get hysterical. <laughs> franks and beans? Oh, we're having franks and beans? <laughs> Hey, Van. Brought your clothes. Thanks, Mrs. H., but I'm already wearing clothes. <laughs> Cheyenne's really upset. <laughs> She's been locked in your room ever since you left, watching the wedding video over and over and over. Now, doesn't that sound like somebody who's hurting? The wedding videos? Yeah. I'm a little thirsty. <laughs> I'm worried, Brock. If Van leaves with things unresolved, this thing could get out of control. Well, if they won't get together, we'll get them together. Do whatever it takes to get Cheyenne to the airport. You really think it'll work? Well, it has to. We don't want them to have to go through the pain of someone not calling someone for a week, and I think you know what I'm talking about. What? You remember. Remember what? Come on, Reba. Oh, Brock, we don't have time for this. Let's go to the airport. <laughs> Man, she's still hurting. Thanks for the ride and everything, Mr. H, but don't you think I should be getting on the plane now? No. No, not yet. Oh, look who's here. Oh, so that's why you kept me from getting on the plane, Benedict Judas. Mom, we knew they were here. That's why we came. I came, I saw. Goodbye. Cheyenne, you have a life and a baby with that man, and I paid $8 for parking. Now start talking. My mom made me come down here to say goodbye. And I already said it. So bye. There's an extra one for the next time you go away. Wow. That apology is so bad, I'm starting to think it wasn't one. I should not apologize to you. You should apologize to me. For what? I didn't do anything. Then you lied. About nothing. Uh, shh, shh, shh. I brought you down here to make up, not to fight. Now get over there and make up. Yeah, and make it fast. They're almost finished boarding. I don't know how I can make up with someone who doesn't even trust me. And there is no reason for you not to trust me. I didn't do anything wrong. But you could. No, I couldn't. Yes, you could. Anyone could. Cheyenne, why don't you believe me? Because my dad did. Reba, you like this shirt? <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. Look, Van, I just... I mean, if it can happen to my parents, it can happen to anyone. Not to us. I will never be like your dad. <laughs> Again, sorry. Cheyenne, you're mad at your husband for what your dad did? Honey, I'm not even mad at him anymore. Really? <laughs> Don't get excited. There's new stuff. I, just, I guess I saw what happened to you guys, and I was just trying to do everything to keep it from happening to us. I'm telling you, it's not gonna happen. Van, it's not that simple. 
Okay, I want to trust you. I, I do. I just, it's not that simple. I mean, I can't just stop feeling the way that I'm feeling. Cheyenne, believe me. You're not going to make our mistakes. You're going to make a bunch of new ones. Yeah. And forget about mine. Honey, you won't even know what half of your mistakes are until one day you're driving your daughter down to the airport, make up with her boneheaded husband, just to find out it was somehow your fault. And then we'll tell Elizabeth, no, no, no. It was Grandpa's fault. <laughs> Sorry, last time. Uh. Hey, Van, it's about time to go. Hi, Reva. And you must be Cheyenne. I'm Kate. It's so nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you on the plane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Cheyenne, this is my career and everything. But I won't go if you don't want me to. You won't? No way. What happens to us is way more important than our future. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah? Yeah. So wait, do you, do you trust me? Well, I'm going to work on it. Travel safe and I'll be here to pick you up when you land. I love you. I love you. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> I couldn't fix it, so I made it into a vest. Let's go, Van. We got an 8.30 tea time. Oh, Dad, this is so cool that you're taking him golfing. Van is totally psyched. He's been up half the night practicing yelling four. <laughs> Cheyenne, honey, if your husband's going to be a golfer, mm -hmm. you'll have to learn to listen to golf stories. Oh. Yeah. I find it's helpful to keep a thumbtack in your hand and squeeze it every few minutes. <laughs> hey, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I play second in the club championship. The pivotal moment, it was hey, a... Hang on. Let me get a thumbtack. <laughs> Come on, Van. We're going to play golf, not miniature golf. Hey, what you up to? Well, I'm going golfing here with Mr. H. Yeah. Oh, I gotta get a boom box for the cart. But... Whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to Brock Stuffy Old Country Club looking like that? <laughs> uh, no, he's not. Cheyenne, go lay out some big boy clothes for Van. Hey, I'm trying to create a new image now that I'm playing arena ball. Oh, tell them about the photo shoot. There's this photo shoot. Van and I are getting our pictures taken at a photo shoot. It's for the team program. I really want a unique look. Yeah. I call it fantastic. Oh. I really want to look hot. I call it looking hot. Oh. Oh, okay. Hey, I'm really glad you guys are here. Whoa. You've never said that before. My palms are sweaty. <laughs> Karen and I had a great conversation last night when she slept over. She told me about some of the colleges that she's considering. College? Mm -hmm. Man, where does the time go? More importantly, where did it come from? <laughs> well, thank goodness we started that college fund when she was little. Oh, I went online and checked that. Yeah, how'd it do during the bear market? Well, let's just say that Yogi got the picnic basket. <laughs> we need to put some cash back in that fund. Now, I'm making some cuts around here, and I was hoping you'd be willing to help out. Yeah, you bet. We'll make some cuts, too. Yeah. We can start shopping at the bulk store. Mm -hmm. And doing our own auto repair. Yeah, we can save millions refining our own oil. <laughs> I think we need to find some bigger cash. So think about it, and we'll talk about it again in a couple of days. All right. Ready to go. Finally. Oh, and I got us a caddy. 
hope you like Snoop Dogg, Dad. Oh. <laughs> hey! Pirates are planted in the past. Though my life is changing fast. Who I am is who I want to be. A single mom who works too hard. Who loves her kids and never stops. With gentle hands and the heart of a fighter. Hey, is Brock home? Oh, he had a business meeting. Would you like some soda from the bulk store? I'm not really sure what flavor it is. <laughs> yeah, I went shopping down there, too. Say, if you ever need any peaches, and I mean ever, <laughs> just let me know. Thanks. Hey, do you need your oil changed? Nah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I came down here to talk about money. This nickel and dime stuff isn't going to do the trick for the college fund. But... I've come up with a way of making some big-time cash. Brock should sell his country club membership. You can sell a membership? It has to be your membership, right? Yeah, that's the catch. Look, Brock's had this membership for 15 years, which means he could make a nifty little profit. Oh, yeah, but leaving the club, that would be a huge deal for Brock. He loves golf. Yeah, he does. Anybody who's seen his naked lady golf tees knows that. Okay, so here's the deal. You sell the membership, put some money into Kira's college fund, and still have a decent amount of money left over. Oh, you, my tangy red-headed neighbor, are a genius. Yeah. You know, and I know exactly what I would do with a little extra do re me. What's that? Put in a pool. A pool? Mm-hmm, absolutely. And then I get one of those hilarious signs <laughs> that says, Welcome to our ool. You'll notice there's no P in it. <laughs> Please keep it that way. Wouldn't that be a hoot? Yeah, I think Brock would really like a pool. And it would be something that we could do together as a family. A pool might be just the thing. When he gets home, I'll tell him that you want to talk to him about something. Or you could talk to him about it. Oh, Reba, this is a big decision. It only seems right it'd be between a man and his ex-wife. Hey, Reba. Barbara Jean said you wanted to talk to me. Yeah. Greetings, that team, the Arena Football League's new power couple, Vern and Shine Montgomery. <laughs> Yo, Sinatra, Sammy and Dino are waiting out in the limo. Oh, Al, check it out. You guys look great. Yeah. Oh, I am so excited about this photo shoot. We're going to be in the team's program. People save those things. We're going to be immortal. Oh, I got to see this. What time are they coming? Oh, we're going to do it over at the arena, not here. Yeah. I don't want it to look like I live with my mother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> you do live with your mother-in-law. Yeah. But I don't want it to look like it. I mean, I mean, we are we're totally grateful for the sacrifices you've made, Mrs. H. Thanks. Oh, hey, check this out. What do you think for our pose for the picture? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you look so French. Yes! Wait, wait, baby. Croissant. Oh, yeah. Croissant. Bye, you guys. Stop. Let's go, man. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh. Is there anything like the excitement of just starting out in life? No. I mean, you got nothing but your dreams. Yeah. Problem is, when you're young, you don't realize that your dreams are the most valuable thing you'll ever have. Have you been listening to your Peter, Paul, and Mary albums again? <laughs> Sit down, Brock. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you, too. You know, it's funny, because it kind of relates to what Van said just now about all the things that you gave up for them. That was very inspirational. Really? Because giving something up is very inspirational. And maybe you can have the opportunity to be inspirational, too, real soon. You know, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. I mean, am I just saying stuff to the kids, or am I actually living it? Ah, the old talking the talk versus walking the walk. Every parent's nightmare. 
<laughs> exactly. I mean, you can talk to your blue in the face about what it takes to make your dreams come true, but unless they see that you're willing to sacrifice, it doesn't mean a thing. I agree with you. Bet you hadn't heard me say that in a while. <laughs> so, to recap, what we're both agreeing on here is that giving up something is very inspirational. Definitely. Oh, man, I don't know what the heck made me think of this, but I have just a suggestion to help you do that. Oh, I don't need a suggestion. I already have a way. I just haven't told anyone yet. Well, tell me, because I'm going to laugh my head off. It's the same thing I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> Are you planning on giving up the country club? What? No. no. <laughs> That'd be crazy. No? I'm going to quit my job. <laughs> going to quit your job? Yes, ma'am. Brock, you work for yourself. <laughs> is it because your boss is a jerk? I'm going to sell that office. It's time to get back in the dream business. But I thought your dream was to be a successful dentist. No, no, it was to be successful. I picked dentistry because I thought I could do well at it, and I have. Okay, wait a minute. So far, it all sounds sane. But where exactly does the train of thought go flying off the tracks? <laughs> Wait, is, is this because we were trying to find money for a Cures College Fund? No, no, that's not the reason, although it will mean that there's money for that. No, you know, I've been thinking about this for a while. I want to live my life in a way that inspires our kids to follow their own dreams. So you think quitting is inspirational? Well, you haven't heard what I'm going to do instead of dentistry. What, make cuckoo clocks? You ready? I doubt it. But go on. I am going to play professional golf. <laughs> golf? Yes, on the Hooters tour. <laughs> well, why didn't you just say that? Right. What the heck's wrong with you? Yeah, it's an actual tour. There are a lot of them. It's like the minor leagues of golf. I'm going to sell the practice and use the money as a nest egg while I work my way up. Then, in a few years, I'm going to get my PGA card and I'm going to shoot for the senior tour. Oh. Is this some kind of midlife crisis? Because you dumping me for the blonde was supposed to be your midlife crisis. You only get one. Dan and Cheyenne just walked out of here with the life bursting out of them because they're trying to follow their dreams. I want that. This is your dream? Brock, we were married for 20 years. I never heard you say anything about playing professional golf. I thought about it a lot. <laughs> well, if thinking about it is all it takes to make it happen, Chris Christopherson should be walking in here any second. <laughs> Reba, with all due respect, I'm not asking for your permission. Okay, all right. Brock, just the other night, we were sitting here trying to find ways to come up with some money for Kira's college fund, remember? Yeah, now we found it. Okay, what about Jake? What about Henry? What if you and Barbara Jean decide to have more children? Reba, Hale Irwin made $3 million last year on the senior tour. Well, then be his caddy and hope that money falls out of his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> What's really going on here? You know what a mulligan is? The booze you've been drinking? <laughs> no. No, it's when you hit a second shot on the golf course because your first one went bad. It's a chance to correct a mistake. This is my mulligan, Reba. But what if the second shot's worse than the first? Well, what if it hits a tree and, and ricochets off and smashes you in the head? Or has that already happened? It's not going to be worse, okay? I'll talk to you later. I'm going to go hit some golf balls. Where is Chris Christopherson? <laughs> Ninety-eight. Barb Jean. Ninety-nine. One hundred. Okay, Henry. Ready or not, here I come. Well, that should give me about 20 minutes. What's up? Okay. I talked to Brock. Oh, my gosh. I'm getting my ool. He just got
got through telling me that he's going to quit his job, sell his practice, and play golf for a living. <laughs> yeah, he started telling me these stories about hooters or mulligans. First I thought he was kidding, then I remembered he's not funny. <laughs> Well, I think that is a wonderful idea. I know, mm -hmm. but I thought if the two of us could get... You what? <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, yeah. I think that Brock will be very successful doing that. Do you guys have a gas leak in this house? <laughs> How can you support this? Because that's what I do, Reba. My role is the supportive wife. I'm not the one he talks to about stuff. No, you are. I'm the one who gets told how it's going to be after the decision has already been made. Oh, that doesn't happen. It just did. <laughs> okay, it does. Put your role aside for a second. Do you honestly think this is a good idea? I think that my husband deserves the right to run his own life. Barbara Jean, you run things. You're the one that wears the clown pants in the family. Well, sure, when it comes to telling Brock how to cook the steaks, but not about something like this. Not, a, not about his happiness. Oh, I see. Just not the important things. And why is that? Just because. Because why? Because, because. Barbara Jean, why? Because maybe I've seen what happens when he thinks his wife isn't supportive enough. Something has been bothering Brock lately. And the one thing that I was really scared of, Reba, was that it was me. I can handle it being anything else. You know, even some boneheaded scheme that scares me to death. Well, if it scares you, tell him. If you don't tell him how you feel, if you just pretend it's okay, then you've got a dishonest marriage. Reba, you and Brock have a very honest relationship. But you don't have a marriage. And I don't intend to be the next former Mrs. Brockhart. It ain't as bad as it sounds. <laughs> Man, your house is gorgeous. Oh. Well, it's just a place I like to hang my hat. <laughs> Hello. I'm glad I made you show it to me. If I am to home so beautiful, I'd want to show it off. Ben, we should go. That's cool. She's not even here. Who? Who? Uh. Uh. uh nobody. Oh. Well, actually, our maid. Oh. Reba. But we, 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 we don't like to call her the maid. No, no, no. She's, uh, she's been with us so long, she's like part of the family. <laughs> well, okay, let's get the happy homeowners in a picture. Okay. All right. You two uh, stand by the staircase there. Okay. Oh, you must be from the team. I'm Reba. Oh, hi, I'm Mary Jo. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you. Van and Cheyenne have been saying some lovely things about yeah. you. Aw, they're so sweet. They are. You're very lucky. Uh, blessed. <laughs> we should go. Yeah, come on. Let me get some pictures of you with the maid. <laughs> oh, are you thirsty? How about some lemonade? Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, uh, Reba, grab your apron. What's that? Get you know. You know, I'll make lemonade. I'll go find some lemons. Okay. <laughs> so tell us, Reba, what's it like working for these two, huh? Okay, look, this is awkward. No, 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 no. I'll tell you what's awkward. Before I got this job, I used to live with my mother-in-law. <laughs> you talk about embarrassing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is great stuff. Oh, yeah, but now... Working for Miss Cheyenne and Mr. Van. Why, it's just like caring for my own children. They treat me right proper. And when I have to take some time off, like today, I have to go down and deal with my kooky ex-husband. Uh -huh. It's never a problem. Even though it means my bosses will have to do all my work. Is that true? It is today. <laughs> and it's a lot of work. They'll have to do the laundry, mm -hmm. cook dinner, <laughs> wash dishes, 
clean the kitchen, and they'll never make a single complaint. Not a peep. I don't know what I do to deserve these two. I tell you, Mary Jo, I'm not lucky. I'm blessed. Oh, this is so embarrassing. You're here for my birthday present. No, I'm gonna buy you some marbles, seeing how you lost all yours. I know what you're gonna say, Reva. Oh, you do? Well, great. Why don't you tell me? Because honestly, I don't know what to say. This is so weird, I don't even know where to begin. No, it's not weird. What's weird is continuing to do something that makes you miserable. Oh, everybody does that. Heck, I talked to Barbara Jean three times this week. You know, I truly believe that I can compete on the senior tour. Well, I got a suggestion for you. Why don't you keep working on your game, keep your job, and do all of this when you retire? I'd be too old. For the senior tour? <laughs> Look, Brock, I'm not asking you this because of the kids. But worrying about somebody after 20 years is a hard habit to break. Come on now, I've asked you this before and I'm going to ask you it again. What's really going on? Brock. I'm not happy. Okay. I haven't been happy for a while. I thought it'd be better after the divorce. And then I thought it'd be better after Barbara Jean and I got married or... After Henry was born or after Kira moved in, it was, it's like my life has become waiting for this thing that's supposed to make me feel good again. Something like a pool? <laughs> hey, this just happens from time to time to people. I guess it's how we know we're still alive. Have you talked to anybody about this? You know, I actually talked to a shrink. Really? Yeah, I met him in a bar. He was pretty loaded, though. <laughs> Brock, I'm serious. You need to do some serious talking and some serious thinking before you make a decision this big. Tell you what. If I make this putt, I'm quitting my job. That was him. <laughs> Brock, this is not a game. I met with a broker. I'm selling the practice. save money for Kira's college fund by growing our own food? Uh -huh. Well, crops are in. <laughs> well, that is amazing. Mm. You spent months planting and weeding and fertilizing, and next thing you know, you've, you've almost got a carrot. <laughs> Good morning, neighbors. So, Kira, are you ready to hit them all? Yeah, but before we go, I need you to sign this permission slip for a school field trip. Sure. This is to get your navel pierced. Cool, I thought we were going to the science center. All right. Man, I gotta start reading those things. Okay, I'm gonna go up and change, then we'll go. Why don't you just wear that? My old gardening shirt? Uh -huh. oh, shoot. I've patched this thing a hundred times. I only wear it to scare the crows away. <laughs> I never thought I'd say this, but what you're wearing is actually cool. Mm -hmm. Wait, are you saying I'm cool? I'm saying your shirt is cool. <laughs> Kira's right. Patrick is the new silk. I want to be cool. I wish I'd save my old rags and patch them onto a shirt. I'll give you $20 for that shirt. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Barbara Jean. I'm not going to sell you the shirt off my back. Okay, I get it. 30. No way. 40. 60. 65. So, yeah! <laughs> Play. 
What you doing? Oh, you look beautiful. I bet you're in a good mood. I got you a fudge-covered apple. <laughs> wow, this looks like an apology apple. What'd you do? Nothing. Yet. Hey, you know how when we're going somewhere and you get all mad because you're waiting for me because I'm doing my hair? Mm -hmm. Well, those days are over. Because all the guys in the football team are shaving their heads. You want to shave your head? If that's what it takes to make you happy. Forget it, Dan. You know how I freaked when you got that perm? Which... We don't talk about the perm. Look, it's for work. And if I don't do it because my wife won't let me, all the guys will make fun of me. This isn't like high school taunting, okay? They're pro football players. They're clever. Mom, Van wants to shave his head. For business purposes. Why don't you practice by mowing the lawn? I absolutely forbid you to do this. End of discussion. But all the guys are doing it. I can't be the only one with soft, wavy brown hair. Well, whatever you do, don't get another one of those perms. <laughs> so, Reba, I got good news. What, Brock came to his senses about quitting his job to play golf? I have not come to my senses, Reba, and I never will. So, you remember that shirt that you sold me? No refund. No, I showed it to a friend who took it to a guy that he works with, and he said that he thinks he could sell those shirts. We're going to be rich. Sure, we're going to be rich. And Brock's going to beat Tiger Woods at the Fat Chance Desert Classic. <laughs> Reba, I'm serious. We should do this. You know, a lot of people make money selling things they make. And a lot of people lose money by selling things they make. Yeah, but you don't hear about those people. <laughs> well, maybe you got a point. Maybe you'll be one of the lucky ones. So, um, you don't mind if I kind of take this and run with it? Hmm. Barbara Jean, you can run with this idea. You can run with scissors. You can run with the bad crowd, just so long as you run. <laughs> As everyone else is? Jeez. So it's okay to do something just because everyone else is doing it? Yeah. <laughs> to be cool. Thanks. Hey, Jakey, where are you going? Graveyard. Hi, honey. You look really pretty. I know, but you're still not shaving your head. Why do we always have to fight about stuff, huh? I mean, I think the world would be a better place if people with opposing views would just agree. <laughs> oh, very mature. Listen, what I'm trying to say is, like, cut it out. Ah, uh, the round table. <laughs> Kira, don't you think Van would look stupid if he shaved his head? Yes, but are we going to list all the ways that he would look stupid? Because I've only got a few years until college. <laughs> Look, everybody's doing it to show unity, all right? Oh. To show we're all on the same team. Oh, geez. If only there were a way to do that with matching jerseys. I can't talk to you. Van, do you mind if I speak for you? Yeah? No? I don't know. What? Van's trying to say that playing on a team involves complex group dynamics, and seemingly self-destructive acts are actually initiation rites to foster camaraderie. Did I just say that? <laughs> Look, I know it's dumb. So what? It was dumb when my high school team dressed in drag on game days. You didn't say anything about that then. Huh. That's the first time I heard those were game days. <laughs> Look, 
This is important to me, okay? Right now, I'm the new guy. Rookie. I just want to feel like I belong. But I don't want you to do it. Why not? Just because. Well, that's not good enough. Well, it used to be. You don't even care what I think. You just want me to agree with the decision that you've already made. Yes. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> you know what? Do whatever you want. I don't care. You are the prettiest on game days. <laughs> I thought so, too. Good news, Reba. I shot a two under par. I hit a seven iron on 18, tap in for birdie. Oh, that's terrific, Brock. Go in the kitchen and get yourself a cookie. <laughs> oh, good, Brock, you're here. I have excellent news. Can it top how Brock killed seven birdies with his 18 wood? <laughs> well, good job, honey. Uh, and I bet you're going to be proud of me, too. $300. I sold this shirt. That buyer loved them so much, he ordered a hundred of them to sell in his stores all over town. This is just the deposit. That's great, honey. Isn't that great, Reba? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he said that this is just the first order. He said that he can see all of Houston wearing these shirts. And after that, all of Texas. And after that, he didn't say. <laughs> but if he did, I bet he would have said America. Wow. This is just like me with golf. Yeah. Except I got a big fat check. <laughs> no, I, I meant you have a lot of potential. Oh, I do. And I have a big fat check. <laughs> wow, this is something. So that guy said that my shirts could sell like that? Well, you know, he didn't mention you, but yes. <laughs> wow, that's great. So fork over my $150. Why would I do that? Because it's my shirt. My design is the hip new thing. <laughs> Who knew? Well, not you. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't so much your design he bought as my salesmanship. Oh. Well, does he want a hundred of your salesmanship or a hundred of my design? You know, the way I see it, you guys did this together. We really did it. <laughs> I recognized the potential of the shirt, and Reba didn't want any part of it. She told me to run with it, and I did. Me, not her. <laughs> Right, but it was my shirt. Yeah, which I bought, which would make it my shirt. <laughs> I bought a greeting card once. That doesn't make me Hallmark. <laughs> well, I bought a lollipop once. Doesn't make me a sucker. <laughs> this is my idea, my business, my company, and my money. Ah. Your idea, my design. Your business, my design. Do you get where I'm going with this? Hey, 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 hey. Why don't you guys just share? Ooh. She had her chance. Oh, come on, Barbara Jean. It was Reba's design. It's only fair that she gets half. Now, you remember what your mother taught you. Don't shape above the knee unless you're expecting company. <laughs> no, the other thing. He who is fair makes friends everywhere. <laughs> okay, fine, but if she gets half the money, she does half the work. Well, of course I will. I've been looking for a way to get some cash for Kira's college fund. Apparently, I'll do anything. <laughs> fine. You win. We'll work together, but I'll call the shots. <laughs> if you hear any shots, they're coming from me. <laughs> to get started. Barbara Jean, take a breath. I mean, even if we do three shirts a night, we're still ahead of schedule. What's that? The stink of mediocrity? <laughs> okay, moving forward. I have cut up a bunch of fabric for patches, so why don't you make a prototype for us to work from? What about the shirt I already made? It was left with the buyer. What? Why would you do that? Well, management made a decision. We're just going to have to live with it. <laughs> okay, fine. Go back and get the shirt, and we'll start again tomorrow. And lose a whole day? Unacceptable! We've got shirts, we've got patches. Do that thing you do! <laughs> if you don't lower your voice, I'm going to do that thing I've always wanted to do. <laughs> we 
Barbara, I knew you were going to ruin this for me. Ruin what? Barbara Jean? Quit being so testy. I am not testy. I am a serious businesswoman. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll be glad when this company can afford a psychiatrist. <laughs> hey, Cheyenne, what you doing? Making a list of insulting names to call Van when he gets back from shaving his head. You know, I can't believe he's doing that after I absolutely positively told him not to. Oh, my gosh. This is the first husband who's ever had a problem with a direct order. <laughs> Did you happen to tell him why you didn't want him to do it? No. Ah, we may be on to something. Look, I can ask you what's wrong, and eventually you'll tell me. Then I'll go to Van and tell him, and then he'll tell me his side of the story, and I'll just get you two to work it out. But you know what? I still got dinner to make, so go talk to him. Yeah, but Van doesn't have a side, Mom. Of course he does. That's what marriage is, finding out each other's side. Go talk to him. All right, I get it. It's just, I... Feel... Go talk to him. I just feel like our marriage... Him! Him! <laughs> you know, you could be very annoying sometimes, Mother. The kid has a point. Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> What's it going to be? Shave it. Bet you hear this a lot. My old lady doesn't want me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's... It's my head. It should be my decision. I just hate when she's mad at me. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> okay. Okay, let's do it. There's no way to, uh, comb that over, is there? Van, I need to talk to you. Could you give us a minute, please? Sure. I'll go see if that stripey thing is turning. What is it, Cheyenne? I'm kind of in the middle of something here. Whoa, that feels weird. <laughs> do this and then do this. <laughs> Look, Van, my mom... <laughs> my mom said that I should, um tell you why I didn't want you to do this instead of just ordering you around. Well, I think that Let makes... me finish. <laughs> I didn't want you to do this because it made me feel left out. Oh, Cheyenne. <laughs> you want to shave your head, too? No. My hair's beautiful. <laughs> I felt left out because, you know, you have this job and it's it's taking up all these areas of your life and now it's it's taking your hair. Yeah. <laughs> but this, this this doesn't mean anything. It's just something I have to do for my job. It's similar to how some people have to take certain tests to get a job. Like when a bartender has to pass the bar. <laughs> Look, it used to be just you and me. Now you have this whole other life, and I'm, I'm not even a part of it. Hey, I, I tried to make you a part of it. I mean, I came to you two times. I mean, I wanted your support. I, I, I wanted you to be here with me because I'm doing this for you and Elizabeth. I'm doing this for our future. 
I mean, do you think I really want to look like the mayor of Munchkinland? Look, I'm sorry, Van. It's just... You know, this is the only Van I've ever known. Look, look. If you don't want me to finish, I guess I don't have to. I mean, yeah, I... I'm pretty sure we can afford a very narrow toupee. <laughs> so what's it gonna be? Okay. Jake's in bed. How's your head? Are you sane yet? <laughs> no. I feel like a failure. We failed. I didn't fail. I ain't started yet. <laughs> Perfect, oh, Jean. Oh Calm down. We got plenty of time. No, we don't. We don't know how much time we have. Sure we do. The shirts aren't due till next Friday. Reba, open your eyes. I'm not talking about the shirts. I'm talking about Brock. Yeah, he's, he's selling the practice. He wants to play pro golf. I don't think he knows what he's doing. Oh, honey. Is that what you're worried about? <laughs> of course he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> He's making all these changes, Reba. What if the next change he wants to make is me? Oh, that's not going to happen. Well, you'll forgive me if I don't find much comfort in the assurances of his ex-wife. <laughs> if the worst does happen, Reba, I just need to know that I can be something other than Brock's wife. But apparently I can't. I can't even be the crazy lady that makes shirts. <laughs> Barbara Jean, he loves you. Reba, he loved you, too. The man's a pig. <laughs> the company finally agrees on something. Barbara Jean, look at me. Uh -uh. Look at me. Uh -uh. Look at me. <laughs> Brock isn't going anywhere. He loves you. He's crazy about you, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's see what you got going here. <laughs> Barbara Jean, I gotta look at it sometime. Come on. <laughs> if they like patches, they're gonna love these. <laughs> oh, God, it's so ugly. <laughs> Don't scream. It's me. I know. You know, actually, I'm kind of getting used to it. By the time it grows back, I might even miss it. When's that going to be, by the way? Hey, honey, it's Daddy. <laughs> I didn't treat you like that when you were bald. <laughs> Cheyenne, I think I made a mistake. No, you just have to remember why you did it, to be like one of the guys. <laughs> well, see, <laughs> the other guys didn't do it. What? Yeah, they tricked me. <laughs> They're mean. Hold me. Oh, Jenny Garth, and next, it's an all-new What I Like About You.